to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We love you and we honor you for tonight. We thank you for the privilege to see this event come to pass tonight. Thank you for all who have traveled. Thank you for our graduates. Thank you for um, our families here represented and across the globe. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom, the grace, and your mercy upon our lives, even to witness this day. We hand over the remaining part of this service to you, and we pray in the name of Jesus that you will grant us grace. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Let me start by appreciating very deeply all who have come to share fellowship with and to celebrate with our graduates, um, your family members, loved ones, well-wishers here present, and those who are connected online. We bless you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I particularly want to celebrate very dear man of God, Pastor Uchaigbe, House on the Rock Church, Abuja. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Just a quick charge and then we'll get into the impartation. Second Chronicles 15 and verse 3. Second Chronicles 15 and verse 3. It's a scripture that I've used here once and again. The Bible says, Now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. Israel had been without a true God and a teaching priest and without law. Let's read verse 4. It says, But when they in their trouble, so trouble was the next imminent thing that happened because of the absence of the presence of the true God, the teaching priest and law. They got into trouble, but the Bible says they turned to the God of Israel and when they did, he was found of them. It is, it is very easy to be able to define the longevity of an organization, of a nation, of a territory. You can know that by their honor to these three factors. Back to verse 3, please. Number one, their honor to the true God. They are false gods. And even when you honor false gods, they, gods, they do not sustain the power to help. But the Bible says this, our God, is an ever-present help, even in time of need. Hallelujah. Number two. People can honor the God of the Bible. Please keep that scripture there. And then not have the presence of teaching priests. You can have a priest, but if the priest, praise God, is not a teaching priest, then you stand the chance of losing the longevity of the impact, the exploits of an organization, of a nation, a church, a society. And then he says, without law. Once you have a people who are a lawless people, it will inevitably lead to a decline and the decadence of any nation and any society. And so when God wants to bless and honor a nation, please listen carefully. When God wants to bless and honor a territory, when God wants to bless and honor a kingdom-driven organization, he doesn't give them money. Listen to my message, redefining inheritance. When God truly wants to bless a people, he does not give them anything material. What he does is, number one, he brings them to the consciousness 
of the true God. John 17 and verse 3, this is eternal life that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. And then number two, God grants them the privilege and the honor to sit under the influence of faithful witnesses. The Bible calls them teaching priests. These are pastors according to Jeremiah 3.15. He says, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Not just stories. They will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And then God brings a level of decorum to the life of an individual. Because the Bible says a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city that is without walls. A city that is without walls is a city that is at risk. Anything and anyone can invade that city. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2. This is the anchor scripture upon which the Koinonia School of Ministry was built upon. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, it says the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. In the economy of God, please look up, in the economy of God, he does not expect truth to stay with only an individual indefinitely. Every time God sends a word to Jacob, his intent is that it will light upon Israel. Are we together? So the way that God spreads his purposes and prepares men is to find an individual and subject that individual through the covenant of alignment to a point in the spirit where you can host certain dimensions of knowledge and power and grace. And then you are now mandated from that point to become a distributor of the same. This is what we have seek to achieve over these nine years in the school of ministry. That out of the abundance of that which we have been privileged to have as faithful stewards. It says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Hallelujah. What is your faithfulness? Your faithfulness is in not keeping back anything that is profitable for God's people. According to Acts 20 and verse 20, it says, I did not hold back. I didn't hold back anything that was profitable unto you, provided it can make for your excelling, provided it can make for your rising. I will not keep it back. Hallelujah. And so we thank God again for these precious people who have submitted themselves to a very rigorous training. I submit to you that the school of ministry is quite intensive and it would require a certain level of determination for you to be able to stay and even survive to the end. For a charge tonight before we get into the impartation, I felt stirred in my heart to reiterate what I told Azaria Campus at their graduation on Friday. Um, just three things that the Lord put in my heart and these have been my contemplations even in the recent weeks. The first is Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2. It says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. There was a problem here now. It says the word preached did not profit them. You would think just because it is the word, it should profit immediately. That even in the presence of the word, the genuine unadulterated word, there is still a condition. It is possible that the word of God can be unprofitable in the life of the recipient, in the life of the hearer. And what was the problem there? The Bible says, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Hallelujah. Many times believers submit themselves to superior knowledge and you would think in the presence of superior knowledge, they should immediately and automatically have dramatic results in their lives. 
But that is not the case. There are people who even in the presence of Jesus, they were not changed. I hope you know that just because you are around Jesus does not guarantee transformation. There were people who wanted to make money out of Jesus rather than being changed from him. There are others who wanted to use Jesus to fuel their ambition. So just because you are around Jesus does not guarantee that you will be a recipient of life. Many people are unable to maximize the truth that they know because they do not mix it with faith. What is faith? In one word, obedience. Faith in one word is obedience. The obedient action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person. Someone can learn, for instance, about the power and the value of prayer, the power and the value of the supremacy of the word, the power and the value of honor. But if you do not practice it, you see, it will not profit you. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. So my first charge to our graduates is that you make up your mind and obtain grace tonight that you are going to not only be doers of the word, but that you will live by these truths that you have learned. Hallelujah. It is faith that brings value to the things that we know. If you do not engage and you do not apply it, it will not work in your life. Number two, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, I shared with them in Zaria, and let me repeat here verse 2. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 2. The second is a challenge that you must continue to learn. If any man think that he knoweth anything, even if that person is a Koinonia School of Ministry graduate, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. This is my second charge. Most times it is success that produces failures. It's a mystery and it's a paradox but it is true hallelujah when people become successful by reason of their results they become complacent when it has to do with advancement both failure and success can cause the same result failure can bring discouragement success can bring complacency hallelujah so anybody who intends to continue not just remain Remaining is one part of it, but you must continue because the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. You must know that as much as you have learned and you have been transformed in the Koinonia School of Ministry, this is not all that you will need to know as far as life and godliness is concerned. Therefore, while you celebrate one stride and one dimension of achievement, your heart must be ever open to learn and to grow. Hallelujah. Ever open to learn and to grow. There are many people who are limited in knowledge. I would always make reference to Acts chapter 18. The Bible spoke about Apollos, of Alexandria the Bible says he was a great man fervent in spirit eloquent he was a very great man very very superior descriptions of that man and then the Bible says but he knew only you can be great knowing only you can be great seeing only you can be great hearing only there are virgin dimensions that we need to explore as far as the knowledge of God is concerned, as far as our excelling in life and destiny is concerned. And if and when God brings you close to this body of truths, you must submit yourself the same way you submitted yourself to learn. You must be ever learning. Hallelujah. Ever learning. This is my second charge. And this is not only to the school of ministry students. Most people hang their boots the moment they receive a certificate. Whether in a tertiary institution or any institution of learning. Um, the coordinator said something, Isaac, he made a very profound statement. He said most people have reduced education to 
just certificates. Education, the word education comes from a Latin word that means to draw out something that is hidden within you. Not just to receive something within. That which you receive in should prime something that is already resident within you. Are we together now? We must continually submit ourselves to learning. I tell myself all the time that there are many things I do not know. While I celebrate the ones that God has shown me by his mercy and grace, I continue to press. He said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. Remember our teaching last week? I press, I press, I press. You know champions by their determination to know more. They celebrate themselves only for a short time and that is enough. They do not flatter themselves with the deception that comes with current levels. Failure seldom produces failures. In fact, failure is the ingredient that will ginger people to be tired of status quo and rise to become successful. I think the real key to failure is mediocrity. Because you are neither a failure nor are you extremely successful. You are hanging somewhere in between, not belonging to any category. What you know should not stop you from knowing what you need to know. Where you are should not stop you from pressing to go where you need to get to. This is my second charge to our beloved graduates. You must have the heart of a learner. Koinonia School of Ministry is the only institution I know where graduates request to come back and have the lectures. That people are graduates already, but they will plead for permission to join specific classes because they still want to brush up on something again. May your heart remain ever learning. In Jesus' name I pray. The third charge very quickly and then we'll get into the impartation is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Hebrews 10, 7. This is a charge to walk in purpose. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Jesus was speaking and he said, this is my meat. In other words, this is what gives me satisfaction, to do and to finish the will of him that has sent me. I observed in one of the weeks, I can't remember, I think three or four weeks ago, while having a discussion during service, I did say that one of the challenges with the body of Christ is that we keep bringing superior knowledge without the platform to deploy it. It is dangerous to give people superior knowledge and not connect them to the platform that gives them room to deploy it. Hallelujah. Because knowledge by its design was not supposed to keep the recipient in one place. Knowledge is kinetic in its structure. Are we together? So when you receive knowledge, it, it, it has a way of breaking that inertia. It will stop you from remaining at the same position. Knowledge has a way of cutting you away from um, stagnation. It, it has the quality of moving you from one level to the other. So when you keep giving people knowledge without the platform to express it, and the universal platform that God has given everyone to express themselves and the knowledge he has given them is purpose. Not everybody will have the privilege to be on this stage to teach and to preach, but everyone has a God-given assignment. And the power and the value of knowledge is when it is connected to purpose. In fact, the value of anything is when it is connected to purpose. Wealth is useless until it is connected to purpose. Growth is useless until it is connected to purpose. Are we together? Jesus saw a tree that was growing but was not producing. In other words, the growth was not justified by the purpose. The purpose there was to take advantage of the growth and to produce fruit. The growth attracted Jesus and he came and did not find figs. You would think Jesus would say, okay, I understand at least you are growing. He said, no, 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 no. You are taken from the earth and yet you are not living purpose. He caused it. No fruit should come from you again. He didn't say your root should not receive water. You can keep receiving it, but I curse you because you are receiving, you are not justifying your growth by connecting it to purpose. That means Nigeria should be a better place after tonight. 
And don't you say I'm not a politician, I'm not in Aso Rock. Transformation and territorial impact is one person at a time. If your child becomes a better person because you're a school of ministry graduate, you have added plus one. Are we together? One million is one times one million. One billion is one times one billion. Hundred arm robbers is one arm robber each from every family where they were largely careless in their training. You have to be able to look at life from its unit. The unit of life is one. One anything can become anything depending on what it partners with. Please learn this. I'm teaching you something powerful. One visionary person in partnership with the Holy Spirit can become a leader that transform a nation. One great person in partnership with a wrong company can become a disaster that becomes a lesson for a territory. Do not downplay the power of one. 7.6 billion started with one. In 7.6 billion, there is one. Are we together? Every time you see one, look beyond one. You are seeing a nation. So when you see one agent of change, you have seen a nation change. It is only a matter of time. Do you know one times any other number greater than it becomes that number? But one times zero, which is less than one, becomes zero. That means one times ten is what? One times hundred. You would think the one disappeared. No, the one produced multiplication. So one times God. You went to school. One times God. One times wisdom. One times speed. It will always give the answer of what partnered with it. So it is not the one. It is what it is in partnership with. This is what I'm teaching you. If it is one alone, one as unity does not carry any power. But beware of what partners with one. If it is God that comes to partner with one, don't you say you are just one. If it is wisdom that just partners with one. Anytime you see someone alone, don't be afraid. Check what else is with him. Because we are not alone. One is powerful because it has the power to partner with anything. One plus Satan is Satan. One plus wickedness is wickedness. One plus laziness is laziness. Are we together? You must know that the Bible says with God all things are possible. Some of our graduates who will be graduates in a few minutes would be sent by God across different strata of human activities across several nations. My charge for you is that anywhere you find yourself more than being called a man of God or a businessman, God has come to train and build you to become witnesses. Our corporate mandate I will always teach is found in John 1, 6 and 7. There was a man sent from God. The Bible says whose name was whatever you can fill in the blank there. The purpose is verse 7. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. So all men through one man can believe. All nations, all businesses, through one man can believe. The School of Ministry operates a twofold structure. We train our students and we build witnesses and ambassadors for the kingdom using a twofold approach. Number one is through strategic and structural mentorship. This is the first phase of our transformative process. We believe in the power of structured mentorship where believers are immersed and subjected through a predefined body of knowledge, superior scripture-based knowledge. Hallelujah. 
and this is what they have done for most of the time and then the other part which is what they're about to experience now is impartation this structure was born out of the observation of Jesus's own ministry this is how he produced the apostles for three and a half years he submitted them through mentorship and then when they were done and had built capacity the Holy Spirit now came upon them and it produced the wonder that we call the church today hallelujah so our precious people have gone through nights days in sun in the rain through all kinds and all shades of inconveniences to arrive at this version of themselves and God himself is proud of everyone who is seated here ready to be a graduate but then the other part of it is a very, very significant and a serious part. Because this is where on legitimate ground you get to receive an impartation. An impartation of the grace that empowers you. A few thoughts about impartation and then we'll pray. Isaiah 9, 8, very popular scripture. The Bible says the Lord sent a word into Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. That means when God sends an anointing, when God sends a grace, when God sends a mantle, when God sends wisdom to an individual, his intent is that it will go as far as it can go. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7, the last sentence Paul was speaking and he said Philippians 1 7, 7. He says, ye all are partakers of my grace. Ye all are partakers of my grace. That means when God empowers a person, how do you know the grace that is upon a person? By the possibilities that surround that person. I have taught you that results are testaments. They are attestations of the kind and the level of grace that is at work in an individual. There are results you cannot have except under the influence of certain graces. It is impossible to have certain results except and unless some graces are at work in you. Hallelujah. In Romans 1 and verse 11, Paul again was teaching and he said, For I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established the mantles that come upon you and the graces that you receive are for your establishment to be grounded to be structured so that your impact will be constructive in numbers chapter 27 we'll read 18 and 20 i made a strong observation of this in zaria and i want to do same here the lord said unto moses take thee joshua now observe carefully the bible says the son of Nun." A man in whom is the spirit. Don't forget that this is God speaking. God is attesting to the fact that this Joshua, Moses, as he is at that point, the spirit is already upon him, but it is still not enough. He says, lay your hand upon him. Verse 19. And set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him charge in their sight. But if you give him a leadership position, they will not hear him, even though he's anointed. The cure for that is verse 20. Thou shalt put some of thy honor upon him. Honor is transferable. You've heard me say, listen, you can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is a grace. Honor is the spiritual quality that is responsible for influence. If honor is not upon you, it does not matter what you have to say. The nations will not hear you. It takes more than oratory. It takes more than sincerity of heart or correctness of information for the nations to hear you. This is God's, this is the Bible's recommendation. He's transferring a leadership position and he's saying, listen, laying on of hands and just imparting wisdom upon him is not enough. You must take your honor. You must take your honor. I hope you know when that honor is upon you, it is not only men who hear you because everything is alive. There are times it is not men you want to hear you. You want gates to hear you. There are times it is the Jordan you want to hear you. And he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he struck Jordan. The Bible says Jordan parted hither and thither. 
you would have stayed and wearied yourself in front of Jordan and write a book that Jordan does not part. No, every challenge is at the mercy of the grace upon the one confronting it. Challenges are not generic. One person can stand in front of a mountain and remain there forever and another person can come and walk through it as though it were no mountain. Believe me when I tell you that the spiritual investment that is upon the life of an individual is what defines your possibilities, even your portion in life and destiny. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him. Because he also transferred his honor upon him. They did to him exactly as they did to Moses. Hallelujah. One more scripture. In Numbers chapter 11. I'll just pick because of time. We'll read 16, 17, 24 and 25. The Bible talks about Moses instructed by God to gather 70 men. Watch this now. Of the elders of Israel. He said, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with you. 17. Then we go to 24. And I will come down and talk with thee there and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee and put upon them. Huh? And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear not thyself alone. 24. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. Now verse 25. <laughs> and the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. Watch this. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and they did not cease. One man was carrying all that Spirit and yet he was not somebody who was given to talking easily. A part of that Spirit comes upon 70 people and the Bible says the weight of what came on them, they were prophesying and could not stop. Yet that was what one man carried and kept quiet with it. You would think Moses was the same as other people. Can I tell you, we are equal in Christ, but we are not equal in grace. Honestly, it's, I, I, I wish I were not the one who would be saying this, but it is the truth. Look at what one man was carrying. And yet he will walk quietly. You would see possibilities come from his life. And all you would see is just the physical frame of the man. And yet God said, he didn't say, I will send an anointing from heaven. He said, Moses, what you are carrying is so strong that I can give 70 others to help you. And it will still not affect you. This is not the night to begin to share my encounters a precious student you have taken over a week to fast and pray and you have prayed along the various graces that God has so graciously invested and these are the graces you are about to receive you've heard me say I am a product of many anointings it is not every grace and every mantle that came through my personal work for it is a button we have also received from others Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. When it was time for Elisha's life to change, I hope you know there was no prophecy that said Elisha would be a prophet. According to the teaching and the training, listen very carefully. 
the prophet, the next prophet should come among some of the sons of the prophet. And yet the Bible says, this man met an ordinary farmer. If you saw him, you would predict that he will be a very great agriculturist. And yet there were other people who were already in the school of ministry of the prophet, but they did not have the discernment to receive. And Elisha said, Elijah told Elisha, he said, I'm about to be taken up, ask. And he said, a double portion of your anointing. He said, you have asked a hard thing. However, there is a law in the spirit that everyone who asketh, receiveth. He said, if you can see me as I am taken up, if you can see me, and the Bible says the heavens were open, and he saw the chariots of heaven come. Listen, he said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And all of a sudden that mantle came upon him and he went to the Jordan. Watch this now. As soon as he, he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he struck the mantle. The Bible says Jordan parted hither and thither. We're about to enter a very sensitive period of this graduation right now. Please, I want everybody to pray, those who are connecting online. Our precious people are about to receive something that will change their lives. It is such as we have that we give. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Graces are resting here tonight. Now listen carefully. We're about to pray. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, you have heard me say it. One of the many mandates he gave me was that to every city and every nation I send you to that light that came from me to you there must be someone in that meeting that that same light will come our precious students have learned they have been built they have prayed they have cried now is the time for them to receive please let's have the oil very quickly The jar everything please Isaac walk with them father this is ordinary oil oil cannot anoint this comes from a tree oil only anoints when it is anointed itself and in the name of Jesus Christ we anoint this oil by the power of the Holy Spirit and Lord, we pray that in the name of Jesus, let this bring impartation to your people. Father, by the privilege of the election of grace, I stand upon my office by the apostolic and the prophetic. And in the name of Jesus, as I have freely received, I pray that the lives and the destinies of your people will be changed even by this impartation in the name of Jesus, let it be a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shalabra, 
Heaven's gates open up With understanding you order the seasons Creating day and night Turning darkness into light Arranging the stars to your pleasing
We're still doing the impartation for the students. Please lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare over every student here, the grace that is dormant within you, that has not found expression. I stand by this mantle of the apostolic and the prophetic. I declare right now, let it be activated now. Let it be activated now. Prophetic graces, apostolic graces, teacher anointings, mantles of leadership. Let it be activated now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare the grace for speed. May it come upon your life now. Speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything connected to ancestry, anything connected to activities of witchcraft that has kept people down in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I open that gate for you. Go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward, beyond any curse, go forward. I'm hearing marine spirits in my heart. I decree and declare any connection with the spirits that reside within waters by the power that raised Christ from the dead, a permanent separation right now. Every door that has refused to open for you, maybe it did not open for those who went ahead of you, but in the name of Jesus Christ, and in the name of he that holds the key of David, that opens a door that no man shuts and shuts a door that no man opens. May that door of destiny be opened now. Be opened now. Everywhere you have been mandated to represent the purposes of God, whether in ministry, whether in business, in politics, in the name of Jesus, the grace that enthrones you there, receive that grace now. And thou shalt take some of thy honor and put upon him, in the name of Jesus, the grace and the mantle that causes nations to listen, that hear ye him anointing, I release it upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace for influence. The grace for visibility. In the name of Jesus, may that grace mantle you right now. And hear me. From today, anyone that fights you goes down instantly. Anyone that fights you goes down instantly. Everyone who has been mandated to partner with you and hold your hands, providing help and resources as far as kingdom advancement is concerned, I prophesy to the north, the south, the east and west, I call them to your business. I call them to your ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone here who is a victim of the negative prophecy of anyone, maybe your parents, maybe people you offended in your days of ignorance, Job said he will deliver you from six things. Yes, seven things. One of it is the scorching tongues of men. Anyone here who is a victim of the speakings of men, I stand by the authority of priesthood and I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you beyond your background. I bless you beyond your limitations. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to the elements of creation they were designed to work in partnership with us therefore I decree and declare the wind the forces that must align themselves 
to ensure you do not fail. In the name of Jesus, we swing them to operation now. The spirit of untimely death that kills men at the prime of their relevance, I decree and declare, I shut the door of the grave over you. I shut the door of the grave over you. I shut the door of the grave over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of lack and poverty. Listen carefully. Especially those of you who are called into ministry. It is the absence of resources that has pushed people into all kinds of compromises. Joining wrong groups, wrong associations with a promise of some financial benefit. I pray for you. The raven that came to feed Elijah to make sure he did not die of hunger. Even if it means God sending ravens, I forbid hunger for you while you serve. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please hear me. I want to pray a very special prayer for everybody but particularly for those called into ministry. The spirit that makes the children of ministers useless as a way of mocking God to say you are here blessing people but your child is a drunkard, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Please hear me. In the name of Jesus, let me prophesy Psalm 112. He said, blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. I prophesy that your seed must be mighty upon earth. He said the generation of the upright shall be blessed. May your generation be blessed. He says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now hear me. When Saul met with Samuel three things happened that I want to prophesy over you please pay attention and don't say you are not part of the graduating students the anointing does not care once your heart is open to receive you can receive right where you are number one when Saul met Samuel Samuel looked at him and said is it not because God has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance he said as you return back you will hear that the donkey that has been missing has been found. Let me prophesy restoration. I don't know what left you and I don't care how long. By the power and the mantle of God, I decree and declare, receive strange restoration. Restoration of time. Restoration of things. I say it again. Restoration of time. Restoration of things. Number two, he said, you will continue going and you will meet three people. All of them holding two loaf of bread. They will salute you and they will give to you honor and favor. Let me speak it over your life. In the name of Jesus, according to Exodus 3.21, and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. By this mantle of favor, I cause dryness and emptiness from your life. I cause dryness and, and emptiness from your life. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15b. It says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. From today, everyone who looks upon you and upon your ministry and upon your business, your organization, I compel favor from them to you. Number three, he said you will come to the garrison of the Philistines. And when you come, the hand of the Lord will rest upon you and you will begin to prophesy. Dimensions that people did not know you walking in. In the name of Jesus, for, for some of you, from tonight, the prophetic like never before, I activate it right now. For some of you, the grace for leadership, that mantle that was upon Joseph, may it rest upon you in the name of Jesus.
Let me pray finally for you. The finisher's anointing. He said, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I taught you last week that destiny is a fight. Destiny is a race. And destiny is a treasure that you must keep. You must know how to fight. You must know how to finish. You must know how to keep. This tripartite grace that helps you to fight, helps you to finish, and helps you to keep. Receive it right now. 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 The Lord is still telling me to prophesy longevity. Listen, the days that are coming, it is the grace that is on you that will keep you. Believe me. The spirit of death is just roaming around nations and families and just bringing pain for people. But I pray for you again. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus, I place a mark upon you. May death be far from you, far from your family, far from your habitation. In the name of Jesus. Blessed is she that believes, the Bible says, for unto her there shall be a performance. There is a grace for performance. The grace that translates what you know into results. It's not enough to know. We must see the results. Therefore, the grace for performance, translating superior revelation into undeniable results. May that grace rest upon you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear me, for some of you, by reason of this impartation, between now and the next three months, what you have seen God do in Koinonia here, may he reproduce it in your life. May he reproduce May he reproduce it in your business. Reproduce it in your organization. In the name of Jesus Christ. One last prayer. The grace that connects you to kings. The grace that connects you to nobles. The grace that connects men to gatekeepers in the name that is above all names. That was the grace that was upon Nehemiah because Nehemiah carried that grace when he cried to the king, even though he was an ordinary cup bearer, in a moment he was given the resources he needed to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and he was given a letter to all the governors to connect with him. In the name of Jesus, the mantle that connects to kings, receive it now. Systems and structures will honor you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Therefore, by the authority of Jesus himself, who is the apostle of the church, and by the privilege of trust and leadership, by the mantle of the apostolic and the prophetic, and in the presence of God's people, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I declare the Koinonia School of Ministry set 2022 graduates in the name of jesus christ let's celebrate them give jesus a big hand clap congratulations 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 in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ as we have declared it so shall it be for you in the name of jesus christ may the lord honor you the Lord bless you. Please sit very patiently as we go to the next section. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Koinonia, I would like us to begin to bless the name of the Lord for all that he has done. Don't forget the Bible says, out of them proceeds thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. The Lord says, I will multiply them, they will not diminish. I will glorify them, they will not be small. I believe this is a moment of thanksgiving. Can we begin to bless the name of the Lord? 
let's thank him i want you to be intentional i want you to make mention open your mouth and begin to bless the lord thank him for that which you have received as a graduate thank him for that which you have received even if you're not a part of the ksom 2022 can you magnify the lord tonight let's give him praise and glory let's honor and adore him let's thank him let's bless his name let's open our mouth and bless the lord let's thank him for his faithfulness lord we are grateful we bless your name thank you for the outpouring of your spirit thank you for the release of mantles thank you for that which you have deposited upon our lives is somebody saying thanks th thank you to the lord tonight can you appreciate the lord thank him for your healing thank him for deliverance thank him for a fresh ordination bless the name of the lord bless the name of the lord thank you mighty father in jesus mighty name we have given thanks can you say better amen can we make a joyful shout to the lord tonight hallelujah to take us further in this service tonight this KSOM 2022 graduation and impartation service, we're going to be proceeding to the issuing of certificates to all the graduates. I would like us to give God a big hand for that. And we're going to be, depending on the skills and administrative prowess of the protocol, to help us in coordinating the students to come pick up their certificates. Our time is fast spent and so students will not have to come up stage here um, very beautifully decorated tables are in front of them and they have been briefed adequately on how they are going to come forward and pick up the certificates that belong to them but before we go further into that one more time i'd like us to appreciate and honor god's servant our father and the lord can we please celebrate and honor apostle joshua selman tonight i'm sure you can do better than that can you please celebrate god's gift and grace to us all right you can go ahead rise to your feet and celebrate him tonight if you are a graduate tonight hallelujah all right so while seated i'd like you to know the protocol are going to be helping to guide all the students the certificates have been carefully and properly arranged in accordance to your seating arrangement so you're just going to march forward, pick the certificate that has your name on it, and then you can proceed in line with the guidance and the direction of the protocol and the ushery unit. Please, we need to be very orderly about this. We're just going to march forward gently. You pick your certificate. As soon as we have the green light, we're going to just begin to pick our certificates. You just march forward this way and then this way, to my right and to my left. The tables in front of us have been you know beautifully decorated and the certificates are laid on them with your names on them so just pick the one that has your name on it as soon as we have the green light from the protocol and ushery department right away hallelujah in the meantime i'd like us to just keep blessing the lord and thanking him for what we have received you want to bless the name of the lord for that which the lord has given the bible says that which the lord does is forever no man can take away from it. No man can add to it. Can we thank the Lord and bless his name while we wait for the proper administration of the certificates that have been issued for the graduating students. I'd like us to bless the Lord together as one body and as one family. Let's magnify the Lord. Be intentional tonight as we thank the Lord and bless his name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. All right, I think the students, we can rise to our feet now. All the graduating students, we can rise to our feet. You can go ahead and celebrate the Lord. Rise to our feet now. You're going to walk this way, my left, and this way, my right, towards the table in front of you. You pick the certificate with your name on it. The photographers are already positioned to just take us a quick shot while you walk back to your seat. Hallelujah. If you want to celebrate family as they walk forward, you can just celebrate them by a clap of hands as they walk forward hallelujah amen all right we can go ahead now
You can go ahead and celebrate them as they walk forward to receive their certificate. Hallelujah. Let's make it really quick. Let's pace up as we do this.
the issuance of certificates to 504 graduates of the 2022 set. I believe this is a moment where we ought to celebrate this great and mighty God. One more time with a loud shout, 
and from a heart of gratitude can you give the Lord a loud shout of thanksgiving and praise now it's important for us to know that all the students have done very well in attending their classes listening and also in passing their exams but some of them have distinguished themselves in that they excelled in the exams in particular and also in their character and discipline and so to that effect to take us further in this auspicious occasion we're going to be moving to the presentation of our words. Can we celebrate the Lord? Good evening, Koinonia. I cannot begin to imagine what every student has had to go through to get here. So indulge me one more time. The students will sit down. We will all stand up and give them a standing ovation. Do that for me, please. And a shout for them. Just celebrate them. Celebrate these students. Thank you. Thank you. Please take your seats. Thank you. Well done, Koinonia students. Everyone has worked really hard. But here is the time for the awards. Some people have gone over and beyond. And tonight, we're going to present awards to them. So as they come up, celebrate the dignitaries who will be coming up to present the awards to them. But celebrate these students. That little pat on the back, it's time to do it. Amen. The first award is going to go to the most disciplined student. The most disciplined student. And I'm going to call on Honorable Justice Mabel Shegumbelo to present this award. Koinonia, is that the best we can do to honor her as she comes up? I call upon Joel Naftali Aiba Priye. is the third best graduating student and I call upon Dr. Nemeka Ewelukwa to present this certificate. Please celebrate him Koinonia. He's the managing director of NBET. Thank you so much sir. Now our third best graduating student is Ashonibare Iyanolua Isaiah. I thought you were going to shout louder. That's true. Thank you very much, sir. Are you ready, Koinonia? We have the second best graduating student, and I call upon Dr. Linus Okori to present this award. <laughs> Dr. Linus is president and founder of the Gotney Leadership Center. Thank you very much, sir. The second best graduating student is Alomse Oluwatsobi Regina. Well done, Toby. Well done. <laughs> Koinonia, celebrate her, please. <laughs> and 
now I present to you the first amongst many. This is for the overall best graduating student. I call upon Senator Cleophas Moses to please come and present this award. Koinonia, let's honor him as he comes. He's the current serving senator representing Bielsa Central Senatorial District. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Not your neighbor, say, are you ready? I call upon Kola Wale Tolua Adonai. final award and this one challenges me so much because it's not over until we are done on earth this is Apostles personal award and it goes to the oldest student who has attended KSOM please Pastor Uche Aibe can you please come and present this award for us can we celebrate Pastor Uche as he comes up? Sukomba Jumai Mercy, 70 years of age, completed KOSM. Good evening, Koinonia. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I want to appreciate you all for gracing our occasion. We are really grateful. Thank you, thank you. My name is Prince. I'm a representative from the Koinonia School of Ministry 2022 session. We want to sincerely appreciate and honor the presence of dignitaries here tonight, our distinguished guests, captains of industry, honorable members, senators, mothers, fathers, and we want to appreciate you all. Thank you so much for gracing our occasion. Thank you for coming to celebrate with us. Thank you for coming to cheer us up. And we pray that the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, May his face, may his countenance shine mightily upon you. The School of Ministry has been for us one of the greatest blessings thus far this year. And I would say it's really been indeed a privilege to be part of the Koinonia School of Ministry. And we believe it was orchestrated divinely by God to be handpicked from the many thousands of applicants. And we really don't take it for granted. 
this has been a major highlight of our lives and the transformational journey which began with great teachers who dedicated time to expound to us the way of the gospel more perfectly. They expounded to us the mysteries of the kingdom, the principles of life, ranging from pneumatology, leadership, finance, ministry, and personal transformation. We are glad to say that we have been trained to the glory of God. On behalf of the Koinonia School of Ministry, we want to say thank you to God, our Father, the Maker who found and granted us this privilege, this access to knowledge and wisdom from our Father. We want to say thank you to Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, the chief host, mentor, and apostle of the church. And we pray that in this very move of life with which we have started, that we will break more ground in Jesus' name. We also want to say a very big thank you to the angel over this commission. Our father, our teacher, a mentor, a visionary leader, an exemplary leader, a coach. Abba, we call him. He has been to us a source, a sustainer. He has poured himself out like a drink offering even unto us. He has given to us the precepts of what we need for life. He has shown us his cars. He hasn't been, he hasn't hid anything literally from us. We want to say thank you. Daddy, thank you. We appreciate you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Also, we want to say a very big thank you to our families, our loved ones, our mothers, our fathers, our husbands, wives, children, for staying with us all through this process, for granting us access to go out, to come in, for bearing with us even throughout the late night lectures. We pray the Lord bless you. We also want to say thank you to you, our viewers, world over, the congregation. We say thank you. Thank you so much from the depths of our heart. And to my colleagues here in Koinonia, KSOM 2022, thank you for your cooperation. Thank you for your support. God has granted us the privilege to be taught and trained for the work he has committed even unto us. And I pray that we will represent his purposes well and be to God indeed that battle acts in Jeremiah 51 verse 20, which says, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for which with me I would break down in pieces the nations and I would destroy kingdoms. And I pray that at the end of our lives we will be able to say like Apostle Paul in Timothy, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith, and there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness that the Lord shall give to me at that set day. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 to 21. And Jesus spake unto them, saying, All power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Go ye therefore into all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, as I have commanded you, and I am with you even unto the end of the age. Koinonia, can you help me celebrate KSOM 2022? Please, may we rise. Koinonia School of Ministry 2022 sets. We have come thus far through a journey. We have been built. We have been methodically and systematically equipped by the kingdom. Praise God. Now, therefore, witnesses in Koinonia, let us go into the world. Let us go into every strata of human activity. Let's go into family. Let's go into religion. Let's go into education. Let's go into all strata of human influence. And let us be active contributors to the project Kingdom Come. Thank you very much.
Hallelujah. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Let me once again congratulate the 2022 set, our now graduates. Congratulations, and may God bless you in the name of Jesus. I want to especially, and um, one last time, appreciate all who have come to grace this occasion. Thank you, um, Pastor Uche. Thank you so much. We do not take your presence for granted. And just to let you know that my biological mother is here. She came. Please give my mom a very, very big God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Mommy, God bless you in Jesus' name. Please be seated. I appreciate every guest, every um, one who came to support their loved ones. May the Lord bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. Um, let me celebrate and appreciate the coordinators. Please rise, Isaac and your team. May God bless you. May God bless you. Remarkable gentlemen. The sacrifices that these people had to go through Shortling, Zaria, Abuja, you know, their families had to go through a lot. May the Lord bless you, the Lord increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. And for everyone who has contributed to making tonight a success, all the heads of department, all of the leaders, every department, may the Lord bless you and increase you in the name of Jesus. One last function before we share the grace. Every opportunity where God's people are gathered is an opportunity for someone to know Jesus. And in as much as tonight is a night of celebration, there is a bigger celebration that supersedes this. The Bible says, precious in the sight of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Precious in the sight of God um, is the death of his beloved. But more than that, the Bible also says how that, speaking about the one who leaves 99 and chases the one, and that when he has found that one, he even rejoices more than the 99 that were with him. I spoke about the power of one, and I know that tonight in this place, inside, outside, all of the overflows, there must have been someone who was inspired by everything that happened tonight, and you're saying, my own issue is not just to be part of the school of ministry, but I need Jesus, and I need him urgently. Two groups in one. There are those who are saying, Apostle, if you will give me a chance, even though I know that our time is far spent, I will want to rededicate my life sincerely and truly to Jesus Christ. I am born again, but it looks like things have gone haywire, and I need restoration. Number two, there are those who are saying, let this be my night. I need to encounter Jesus. Whilst we're seated, we want to honor these two groups of people. I'm going to request that you come and stand right in front, and it will be my joy and honor to lead you to Jesus Christ. And when I make that call, do not be ashamed, do not be afraid, whether you're inside or any of the overflows, Jesus is giving you an opportunity. I begin my counting now. Be bold enough and come and stand. God bless you. One. Let's appreciate them as they come. Two. Tonight can be your night, can be a new walk for you with Jesus. It is never too late with Jesus. Koinonia, can we keep blessing the Lord for them? It is never too late with Jesus. He is Alpha and Omega. That means there is no beginning without him. Even if you have lived 500 years, 200 years, 30 years, 40 years, as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned, you have not begun until you meet the beginning himself. You are merely existing until you meet Jesus. Listen, while you're marching forward, let me tell you this frankly. A life without Jesus Christ is a life that will be utterly defeated in this life and even in the life hereafter. When we make a call for Jesus, it's not just satisfying the guilt of feeling that you're a man of God. In truth, Jesus is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. He said it himself. He said, no man cometh to the Father except by me. Some of you have been confused. Your life has been scattered. Some of you come from families where nobody has risen. And this may be your chance to make it right with destiny. 
I counsel you to win that war once and for all. We're still waiting. Just two more counts and I begin to pray. For those of you who are coming, if you're coming from outside, please hurry up so that we pray the prayer together. Hallelujah. The price of everyone's soul is the blood of Jesus. The price of everyone, young and old, male, female. And for those who are watching by way of television, you're watching from your home, your office, or a family gathered together just watching, you can make it right with Jesus right there in your room. You may be watching a rebroadcast of this. It is never too late. This is what it's really all about. Not just about students and graduation and a man of God and a ministry. All of those are platforms and our assignment is to reveal and glorify Jesus. So as I lead God's precious people to prayer, may you join, please join with all your heart. And when you pray, mean it from the depth of your heart. You're not just reciting a poem and don't just whip up emotions and then go through the emotional ceremony and then not mean it in your heart. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10, it is the union between the heart and the mouth that leads to salvation. He said, with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I congratulate you for making this bold decision to stand before Jesus. May I request those of you in front and all the overflows and even those following online, may I request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender high above your head and please say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i ask you to be my lord my savior and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever i begin a new journey with you i am a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb amen Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have come to you. The Bible declares that as many who would come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I pray by the authority of scripture and I declare unto you that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. I call you recipients of the life of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. And for you, I declare that it will be forward ever and backward never. In the mighty name of Jesus. A big congratulations to you. Let's give them a big hand clap. May I request that you follow the counselors just by my right. Let's celebrate them as they go. They'll have a word with you very briefly. And then you'll be back to your seat. Are you still clapping? A few announcements and then we tie it up for tonight to inform you that next week 25th is our miracle service for the month of September <laughs> hallelujah listen please let me encourage you like never before I want you to not just invite people but be intentional about inviting people who really need to see the touch of God in their lives you can't imagine how many people are stranded spiritually people who are under all kinds of demonic oppressions this is why god designed this miracle service everyone is invited but in all fairness to those who are in need according to isaiah 61 we're praying that god will bring those who are bound those who are in prison those who need to you know the favor of god declared over them you know someone who is going through things you know a family a business an individual even nations, leaders, you can connect by faith, 5 p.m. right here. And um, we trust God for an amazing time. And do inform them, and for those of you who are listening, make sure that you come with your prayer request. It's not a ritual. It's a very deep mystery that will produce strange testimonies for you. For those who are not based in Abuja here, you can connect from any part of the world. Our social media platforms are there. Can you project it for me, my dear people? If we can have the social media platforms by the way for those of you who are yet to connect with us um, please do well you're missing a lot all our teachings um, 
where, where, where live on all of these platforms, Facebook, Koinonia Global, Instagram, Koinonia Abuja, YouTube, Twitter, and then our Koinonia Radio, you can do well to connect, not just um, for the service, but every other day. Um, it's almost 24 hours, and you can always connect, you know, the prayers. And that also includes my external ministrations, my ministrations outside of a local meeting in any nation, anywhere. You will always find it, especially on Koinonia Global. So please connect with us, and the Lord will do you good in the mighty name of Jesus. We announced last week, and I'll repeat it one last time, that the ushering department is open for new members. All interested persons should meet um, an official at the PR desk just outside of this auditorium immediately after the grace. You want to be part of our ushering people. They are in need of more hands. God is expanding and increasing, and you can imagine that they need a lot more hands so if God has put that in your heart and you want to serve make sure you go there if and when you want to serve talk to yourself be convinced that I want to serve in the house of God and then you can go to the PR stand and they will direct you on what else to do hallelujah you can keep tab with all my meetings during the week before the miracle service we'll always make it available on our social media platforms and then will almost always um, broadcast it live or there will be an almost immediate rebroadcast so connect every opportunity to connect and hear the word is your opportunity and you know i have taught you that when i travel we are traveling together remember it's not just apostle joshua selman traveling it is koinonia extending the hand and the glory of the lord this week i'll be in enugu and um i'm with reverend edward at house on the rock Enugu. So those of you who are within the East and around the East, join me. We'll have a very powerful time and the Lord will grant us grace in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Even though the miracle service is um, here, but all of you in Akwai Bom, I'll have a quick trip. The Akwai Bom is celebrating their um, their um, anniversary and um, so I'll be speaking there and very quickly we'll come back and connect to the miracle service so all of you who are in Uyo Akwai Bomb State were there Sunday for the service to wrap up the celebration of the state and we trust that it will be a wonderful time make sure you are there find out the details you can contact um, your the official social media platforms of your um the acquire bomb state government and any other platform that relates to that i'm sure that they would be able to get that in the course of the week hopefully by weekend you would find it in our own platform so the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ and then just a very quick one also um south africa i'm coming to you it's going to be a wonderful conference with my dear friend and brother Apostle Felix. So let me lend my voice in the publicity house of treasures, Johannesburg. It will be a wonderful time. The conference is from the 29th to 1st October. I'm not there all the days, but you'll get details for the days and the time. And um, it will be a remarkable time. Transformation, healing, deliverance. We'll be speaking over the nation of South Africa and declaring that it's a new season for them. So all of you in South Africa and around the regions, please join me there. Again, you will find the details on our social media platform. May the Lord bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. More announcements will come hopefully next week. I just thought to share a few of our strategic meetings so that we can prepare our hearts. This is not just for your information alone, but so that you can back us up in prayer whilst we go. He said, brethren, pray for us. Hallelujah. That the word of the Lord will find unrestrained access in all these regions. That the Lord will back his word with signs and wonders. And there will be territorial revivals and transformation in Jesus' name. One more time, thank you for tonight. May God bless you. Please let's stand to close the service. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. 
I decree and declare that this week beginning will be the best for you so far. In the name of Jesus, may the hand of God rest upon you. Every grace, every declaration you have received, it will begin to speak immediately. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that you go forth with joy and you are led forth with peace. The lines have fallen for you in pleasant places and you have a goodly heritage. The testimony you have not shared from January till now, may this be the week that produces it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And any battle you have been fighting from January till now, this is the week where it ends permanently. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, after the grace, please allow the School of Ministry students, I'm sure they may want to have snapshots with their loved ones. We didn't have the opportunity to do dedicated shots. This is a memorable moment, so protocol, please allow them to have the liberty, provided you do it in an orderly way. And um, if they do want to snap or celebrate with their loved ones, give them the liberty too. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you at the miracle service. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.